Mike one, Mike two, three, two, one. Tom McCaffrey, thank you so much for joining me on the couch today. Sure. Bro, <laughs> hottest day of the year, no joke. Maybe not temperature-wise, humidity-wise for sure. I think so, yeah. I was supposed to play tennis today. Thank God that didn't happen. But you walked over here from your apartment, which is like, what, uh, a mile and change? It's mainly the avenues. So, sure. like, uh, from First Avenue and, the, you know, so, like, Seven Avenues yeah. is pretty fucking, <laughs> like... I don't, it felt like I, I tried to take the crosstown bus, but oh. it just wasn't coming. Okay. So I did that thing where I was like, oh, I'll walk. And then if it comes, I'll just get on it. But I, it finally caught up to me at Sixth Avenue. Okay. And I got on it. And as I was getting on like, it, why am I doing this? I'm pretty cool. Well, it, it actually was a good idea because I had to take it two avenues, which sounds like nothing much, but you know. It does save you time. But as I was getting on, this crazy guy, I, I guess homeless crazy guy, was like, as I walked past him, he kind of did that, like, that jerky move of, like, yo, what's up? What's up? And I, like, kind of just went around him. Yeah. And he goes, you motherfucker. He's, he called me a cracker. Okay. <clears throat> what you looking at, cracker? And I just, like, I, you know, I just didn't respond. <laughs> I, I wasn't I'm like, what do you mean? Have you got over here <laughs> clean, dude. But... I usually am walking everywhere in the city these days. Like, if I were where you were, like, a, a little bit over a mile, I'd easily walk. But today, walked. I went to Best Buy, which is, like, pretty close by. And it was the most uncomfortable I've felt while being in the city this year, for sure, 2021. Like, even wearing the shorts, I have, like, these new Ted Jones shirts that came, like, tennis material. Here, touch that. Uh, it's like tennis uh, material. I didn't even mean to order it like this, but like these are supposed to be breathable, I guess, like dry fit or whatever. You see Tom's repping the merch too. I gave Tom the full get up because he came here, schwitzing. It's no joke outside. I was Welcome schwitzing. to freaking Ted Jones World here on the couch. Tom McCaffrey just did the Ted Jones comedy show the other day. Did you have a fun time at the stand, sir? I did, yeah. That was that was fun. I um I haven't done that place in a while. I mean, I haven't been there since it since the pandemic. Yeah. So uh, I was actually surprised. I was happy it was indoors. Yeah, I, I assumed totally it was going to be outside. Out. Have you done it outside? No. Uh, we've just done the show indoors. Because I don't I've do heard, well in outdoor shows. I've heard. I barely honestly, do well in indoor shows. I've heard <laughs> nothing but <laughs> complaints from comics when they do that outdoor show there. Like, I love the stand. Obviously, love everyone operating over there. But, like. The comics just don't like the outdoor shows. And I don't know about the audience. Like, maybe if you get, like, a nice, cool, windy night, it's ideal. But, I mean, the past few nights, especially when it was just, like, downpouring the other night, it's, like, kind of a jam, you know? Yeah, may I mean, may maybe that one wouldn't have been as bad outdoors because it's, like, you're kind of on a street that's kind of closed off. But, you so know, I've done them in, like, I've done them on, like, roofs and, like fields and it's just like i feel like no one can hear me sure no no, no. yeah the acoustics are tough definitely because there's nothing really to like bounce off and then come back in right yes comedy's hard enough when everything's going perfectly sure. set up yes when the light even the when the lighting perfect, and the sound and is perfect it's still hitting. really yes. hard yes. so when you add in like they can't hear you and it's just like yeah, it's, it's also, rough. You know, I so, told you I'm not working at my dad's company anymore, so yeah. whatever. I guess focusing on me. And also, man, if I'm going out on these dates, chances are you're, I'm You're focusing on pay. you? I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, your, all your articles of clothing have yeah, your name on I them. Lit, dude, yeah, I only, wear, I only wear clothes that say Ted Jones or Ted Jones World. But, I mean, I just don't want to waste 100 bucks on the first date. I don't want to get there. Then I'm going to wake up hungover. I'm vegan. Like, I'm trying to take care of myself, bro. So I don't know if I have time for that. If somebody comes to me and is like, let's go on a date. Let's go Dutch. Let's yeah. go to 50-50. Sure, maybe. Are I you meeting, like, anyone just, like, in the world? Not like, at really. your shows? I mean, just Ted Jones. Well, well, I mean, yeah, sure. When people come to the shows, I'll see them at that point. I'll go to comedy shows occasionally if I'm doing a It set. seems like that's the best way. If you have your own show. Sure. That's a good way to sure, yeah. And I feel like the I've done your shows a few times yeah. at different, but um, there's always like ch hot chicks there, right? Yeah, sure. So do you know them or are yeah, they yeah, just yeah. there? I typically do know them. Or okay, are you are they just friends of yours? Are you sure. Like trying to maybe they're like past people who I've had. You seem pretty. I mean, with. you seem pretty like chill when it comes to like women right like you're not sure. like super aggressive no i think that julio gallerati has said within i mean since 2021 i've almost been like asexual 
You know, I really don't like I'm not pursuing women, you know, right, which I think is is kind of the way to do it. I, well, I don't know, man. I mean, I haven't had any luck since I've like stopped pursuing women in the past, you know, like seven months, whatever. I yeah. haven't on any, on any dates, but is that considered luck? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, dude, like I feel like I really do have a lot of time for myself, like chopping this thing up, having a guest here once a week doing my own episode and then the vlog yeah you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of crap it yeah they can really distract you I chasing agree. women especially if i'm at a point right now where i'm like all right i don't need to waste so much time going on a date that might not work or whatever if the stars align the stars align that's what i'm saying well i was i don't know what i was i was watching something about you know relationships and stuff and they were saying that you know a lot of guys get caught up in like chasing after women like oh i'm gonna get you know i want this hot woman uh, this hot woman this hot woman but they were saying to just um create a lifestyle that is appealing sure. and then women will just kind of come to you instead sure. of instead of like pursue your own yeah your, your like your own uh interests and create your own life that that will come with it we'll see i mean I'm, this is like month three of uh not have not working for my dad anymore so we'll see. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully the women come or whatever. But Tom, let's talk a little bit more about you, man. You were just telling me about this um, kind of indie film documentary that came out. You put out one of the funniest um, comedic. I don't. I, is it a documentary? Kind of. Uh, no, it's a it's a fake documentary. No, but uh, you know which one I'm referring to. Like your adventures in comedy. Yeah, your previous documentary. Um, adventures in comedy available on Amazon. By the way, guys. Yeah. Amazon, Prime, Amazon and funny. Tubi and a bunch of other right, stuff. Amazon probably. The That's more probably the better. Right. Even though Tubi, it's <laughs> free. <laughs> what's Tubi? I don't know. It's like one of those streaming services. Okay. Yeah, um, you guys can find it on Amazon. What's Tubi? No, it's the, I'd say the easiest way to find it. It's Hilarious. not a few things. It might even be on like. No, maybe it's not on that. Um, Huge comic names. Um, Hulu. It, 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 it had its debut on Hulu. Right, right, right. Um, no, but it's a it's a mockumentary. Nice. Even though I have I have interviews with, like, uh, I I did real interviews with some comedians and I interspersed that throughout it. Sure. So then I put that in between, like the kind of the mockumentary stuff that's following me, and it's it's basically following me. I'm getting ready to record a, an album and um, like my, my career is kind of like hit the skids and I'm just, I'm trying to like have kind of a comeback. It's, I, I thought of like um, the, this is spinal tap is like one of my favorite movies. So I was like, Oh, let me do like kind of like a, this is spinal tap, but with stand up comedy, I'm not, it's not like on the same level as that, but that was my idea. Well, in, <clears throat> for, I mean, from what I saw, dude, I mean, you had serious interviews with a number of well-known comics. Um, Jim Gaffigan, Janine. Janine Garofalo's Garofalo, in it, yeah. Um, um, a lot of people. Uh, Michael Che is in Hannibal it. Hannibal Burris. Hannibal. He's in it for like a second, but. Right. But um, I mean, just had a lot of people. And yeah. Also, it's funny, like, you know, like, granted, in this movie, you were about to shoot your special, and then you go to these shows that are like you know, not special worthy. You know what I mean? Like you'll go to an apartment for a show or stuff. Basically it just shows how a comics life really is. You know, it's not, you're not performing in front of 500 people every single night. Right. Or ever really. Right, right, right. But no, um, yeah. I mean, when I, when I first started it, I wanted to do a docu, I wanted to do a straight up documentary. I actually had, I first, the idea I had was to do a, um, documentary about Dave Chappelle because it was like before he had come back, his big comeback. It was after the Chappelle show? It was after that. I mean, it, this was like, God, when was it? Like 2012 is when I first had the idea. And um, I just was thinking, I saw an interview with Chappelle and like, that was like on inside the actor's studio, like right after he left Chappelle show. And I was just kind of thinking about how at the time he had never come, come back into the forefront. Remember he was just gone. And then For whenever you. I heard stories about him, it was like, Oh, he went crazy on a plane and they made him let them land the plane. But which I don't think was, but it was like the media was just kind of always trying to paint him in a negative way. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I was totally. like, Oh, I want to do a documentary about like what, like wh why didn't he ever come back? Like what's he doing? You know? And so I tried to do it and no co comedians wanted to talk about it. it was really really weird everyone got real Janine Garofalo I, I asked about it and she was like I don't want to talk about that like he's gonna he's not gonna like that you're doing that and I was like and the more I tried to do it like I, it was just gonna be too hard I and I knew I would never get him to, to inter, do an interview so 
I just was like, well, I, maybe I'll just do a regular documentary about comedy, but that had been done, just a straight up stand up documentary. And I was like, well, well, let me do a different angle. Like, oh, why don't I do like Spinal Tap? Like, no one had ever really done that. So, so I get a mockumentary. Yeah. Adventures in Comedy Guys. Check that that's out. That's a, that's a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about this new film, this new indie film that um, is coming Oh, out. well, th- so the, the, it, it's not really new. So basically, I, I made a movie in like 2009, and it was this indie film. I, I did a show at UCB Theater, and um, uh, afterwards, this man, this guy and woman came up to me, and they were like, hey, do you want to like audition for a movie and I was like you know first of all it just sounds so sketchy yeah 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 well, <laughs> like, you're in the right place at the right time right? well I was like uh, imagines happens at UCB like, right right show. I know so I know great, I'm a movie star <laughs> I know <laughs> it's funny too because I was very like uh, what like um well, they were like, "Do you know who Abel Ferrara is?" They asked me that. Do you know? And do you know who that is? is? That the weekend, isn't that Abel? Or is- uh, yeah, it's the weekend. So they're doing a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it on the first try. They were like, "Do you want to do a movie with the weekend?" Um, and I was like, "Look, I only work during the week." Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> All right. There. All right. There. So um, no, Abel Ferrara is this like indie fi- New York film director who's sure. been around since the seventies, sure. and I knew who he was because I had seen, I had read a lot about him. I'm kind, I'm sort of like, I'm not a cinephile, but I know a lot about like obscure cinema and stuff. And so I was like, oh yeah, I, I know him. And he did like Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel. He did King of New York. Uh, he he recently did a bunch of movies with like Willem Dafoe. So anyway, like. So I was like, yeah, all right. And then they gave me the script and I was like, yeah, I don't know. And then I auditioned and like, they were really into me. And it was like the lead part. And I played this like 90s ex, I was like a ex rave DJ from the, who was into raves in the 90s. And it was yeah. like, I had not outgrown it. And um, so they were like, ah, oh, we'll pay you money. And I was like, all right. And I didn't really think anything of it. It was so low budget. And then um, two years later, it like came out in like a theater in Brooklyn. And like it got reviewed by like the Times and all this stuff. And um, I went to a screening of it and like people were like kind of into it. But then so what happened is over the years, like the guy, the cinematographer, this guy, Sean Price Williams, has That's become this like really known cinematographer in the indie scene. Like, you know, the, the Safty brothers, Yes, he they shot like the uncut gems. Those guys. Yeah. He shot all their movies except uncut gems. He did the last movie. I think he did for them was good time, which was with like, um, Robert Pattinson and Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah. So, and so they keep having like screenings every few years. Like the, the director will like message me be like, Oh, they're having a screening. And like, like three years ago they had one at this theater and like I showed up and there's this whole indie film scene and they like, they all know the movie. And so like I went to the screen like three years ago and I went to go buy a ticket and the, the ticket person was like, you don't, you can just go right in. Like, it's like weird. It's almost like I'm like famous for a night. Oh, yeah, for sure. And th- I feel like that's the same kind of thing with comedy, like indie comedy. Also you're famous. Right. So it's weird. It's like, I'll go there and everyone's like, oh man, you're, and like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it almost feels like they're making fun of me because they're like, you're <laughs> so great. Mean? And I'm like, I, and like, cause I watched it and I'm like, I don't think I'm like that great in sure. it. But so anyway, like, so this theater, I, they just screened it again, like three weeks ago because this theater cinema village Where's was that? reopening. It's on like uh, 12th and Broadway. It's like a theater like that they, I've gone to and seen regular movies yeah. in. So Abel Ferrara, that director was they were doing oh, it. Re- and Broadway, sorry, sorry. Between yeah. Fifth and University. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's so it. twelfth between Fifth and University over there. And uh, they Abel Ferrara was, they were reopening the theater and so they were like, Oh, we're gonna have an Abel Ferrara retrospective where he uh, played 10 movies of that he was involved in nice. and mine was one of the movies they played and it was like what yeah, go ahead, go ahead. well I was just gonna say it was weird so like a few, there was like kind of these he also showed like a Bern, Bernardo Bertolucci movie who, who did like Last Tango in Paris so th- anyway they sent me the trailer to, to promote it and it was like clips from all the movies and it was like Willem Dafoe and then like a Bernardo Bertolucci movie and then me in the trailer. So it was like weird. And then I went to the screening I was gonna ask if you want. and everyone's like, 
you know, and I sat in the back, I, I put my mask on. I just didn't want to like, cause I, I, I'm, I mean, I know it's like the cliche, but I'm mortified watching it. I can't, it's so hard for me to watch. And then, you know, after the movie, you know, Sean Price Williams is there and he's like, man, you're so great in this movie, you know? And like, yeah. he's like a star there now, you know what I mean? So it's like, um, and again, it was just for, for the day, I'm just like this big shot, but then I leave and it's like over. How do we find it? It's on like, it's not on any main streaming sites, but it's on, it's become this like kind of obscure arty movie that like, like cinephiles love. Is it's it like a Sundance thing kind of, I know. No, like, I mean, it, it would maybe be considered, I think it's gotten more of a rep because Abel Ferrara and, and then Price Sean Williams. Price Williams. Sure. And what then, else has he directed or whatever produced? I've seen, I've heard that name. Sean Price Williams? Yes. Well, he, he's a cinematographer. He what shot he? like, okay. Like Good Time is one of the big ones yeah. he did. Um, he, I, I can't. He's done a lot of these. He, there, there's this guy named Alex Ross Perry who's like this big director oh, now. Like, everyone has three names. Yeah. So like <laughs> he's done stuff with him. Right. There's this indie scene when I shot my movie Happy Life that was kind of like burgeoning in 2009. They were all cut. A lot of them worked at Kim's Video. Remember Kim's Video? Mm, no. Um, it was down in the village and it was kind of like this, like kind of hip, cool, like video store. And okay. it, they were known for being like yeah, cinephiles yeah. who were like snarky uh, and they, they judge you whenever you rented movies uh, and they just know. <laughs> and you know, these guys, they just know everything about movies, sure, sure, sure. like any movie. You know that's a lot been, about movies too, I do, but like. these guys okay. like, and the thing like Sean Price Williams is, is such like, at first he's a really like nice guy. He's very curmudgeonly, but like, what does that mean? like he's kind of like, uh, a uh, like grouchy a little bit you know and he also always seems like like the last time i saw him like three years ago he's like yeah i don't even want to like do anything anymore i don't even want to work anymore and i'm like oh you but you're doing a lot of cinematography he's like yeah but i'm not even in the union i don't want to be in the union like that kind of stuff and then he someone else had made a movie that he starred in they like convinced him to be in a movie and i went to see it the next night after my screening and it you know, he was like great in it, and everyone like went nuts over the movie. It was like, it was just, it's like a, it's a really specific, weird scene that I'll always kind of like show up to every three years, and everyone there is like, I almost feel like I'm screening? being punked. Or what's what? the next screening? You like on the Truman Show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like weird. Like, have you guys all gotten together to like make me feel good for the night? Absolutely not, bro. I think you're a great guy. So yeah, I'm here to make you feel good for the fucking. I yeah, don't know, yeah. Long it's we're just like, for. and then, but what sucks is like, I'm like, yeah, I am great, and then I leave, and I'm like, the next day, I'm kind of like, well, what? Interesting. <laughs> I just go outside, and no one cares anymore. Right, right. Uh, it's on. Um, the, the 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 director just sent me a link. This kind of cool, like, can you? We'll we'll put it in it the, we'll put it in the YouTube yeah. description here, guys, on the Spotify description, Apple Podcast. Uh, click on this link that Tom has generously sent to me that um, we'll uh, get it going. Also on Amazon, guys, Adventures in Comedy. That I know for sure is um, a great time. So take a look at that mockumentary. For show. So what, what's the future looking like for you, man? Comedy, acting, what do you, I mean, what do you like doing more, bro? I mean, you've been um, in the industry a very long time. You know all the heavy have hitters. I? I mean, I feel like I've barely been in the industry. But I feel like you know everyone knows you, and you know everyone. Is that not? It's true? weird. I feel like I've been like I. I feel very like I, on the outskirts of the industry, but then like when I will look at things, I've done a lot of things that like I think are kind of cool, but like um, are not hugely like mainstreamy things. The more indie, you say. Indie and also like it kind of fits that I would be in a movie that was like beloved by like a very niche yeah um, niche okay. market of people um but the, you know i the older i get the more i'm like kind of i think for a while and comedy especially you get very caught up in like it's very competitive you know like i'm the best i'm doing this what have you done lately i, I did this i did this tv thing i did this and i always like you know, I could never quite get the big main things. Like I would do things, but it was never like, like a lot of my TV credits when early on were like things that you'd be like, I did this and they'd be like, what is that? And I'd be like, well, it was on for like a month and it's not on anymore. Um, but then the more I, I did, the, the older I get, the more I'm kind of, I, I think I appreciate that kind of like 
niche stuff. I, I think I'm better at being kind of like the um, underground-ish. Underground. Where people, like, like, people know him and like him, and he's really people think he's great, but he's not really like... I think I was caught up y- younger with like attention and like fame because in comedy I think it kind of brings it out of you like the competitive nature and I think older I'm very not like I, you know I I was always funny and I I, I kind of wanted to do comedy it wasn't like initially what I ever saw myself doing but like stand up I mean but like I think when you get in it everyone's kind of like the goal is like you got to be like Kevin Hart you got to get your own show you got to become famous you got to be movies and like not everyone is is like that like not everyone's going to be like Kevin Hart I mean like I I know that that's like a weird statement but like I I don't I think for a while I was like well I they're in a movie and they have their own show like why aren't I doing that and then looking back I'm like I don't think I would have been good at that I don't know that I would have wanted to have my own show when I didn't really know what the show would be. Sure. You know what I mean? So like, I think I got more, I made a decision when I was kind of like not getting things I wanted. I kind of made a decision of like, the only thing I can control is doing things that I think are good is being good at something. So I decided like, I'm going to still do comedy and, and do things, but I'm just going to worry about them being good and if no one likes Focusing them on your strengths kind of you mean yeah but also like if i can't worry about if no one likes them or if no one's giving me totally, something bro. you know what i mean you it's like do shit that you think is funny or right because yeah. if you don't it's, it just becomes like not no one likes it or it's just yeah, mediocre yeah or if you like if you consistently say things that you don't believe in or do things that you won't keep up like if you were to become famous with it like you know how are you gonna keep it going long term you know like it just for example like in terms of uh, like thinking about this vlog that I've been doing for like three and a half months though I've thought like oh should I start doing like pranks and stuff like that but like that's ultimately not me you know I don't want to like piss people off I don't want people to like start swinging at me because like if, <laughs> yeah. if I do get famous doing that like I'm not going to be able to do that every episode I don't want to do that right you get caught up in like oh, people like this so I should this, do this is the thing that's getting attention now yeah. do this and now what's happened is like it's totally changed where it's all about like followers and views. And it's like, you know what, dude, I don't know how to get these people to watch my videos. I just don't, I, you know, and you're right. Like, you know, people be like, you gotta do this and you gotta do this thing. And it's like, well, I don't know how to do that. That's not what I'm good at. So I'm going to do what I think I'm, I think is good. And you you know, like just basically I I went to law school years ago and that was kind of part of it because I was like, I didn't want to be beholden to the industry, like not giving me things. I was like, it kind of calmed me down becoming a lawyer because I was like, oh, well now I don't have to worry about not getting things that I think I should get. You have money coming in. Right. I can make money. And if I, you know, I listened to a, a, a book recently the woman who wrote Eat, Pray, Love wrote a book about art and creativity. And oh. it's real. I forgot what it's called, but it's really good. Um, an, an audio book or whatever. Yeah. I listened to it over audio, but it's, it's, she makes that point that everyone gets caught up in when you're being creative, like, Oh, if I have a, a job on this, you know, making money on this, that's not creative, then I'm like a fraud. And it's like, yeah, that's really not true. Like, there's like this thing that people think of of like oh i'm not allowed to be creative but it's like you can still be really creative and like maybe not be getting the things that's you think you should be getting that's interesting because like I, when when people talk about their jobs and stuff <coughs> i mean it's hard not to identify with just your job you know like you spend so much time going from like nine to five where you're in this serious work environment maybe and you don't have time for jokes or to play around and then, you know, 5 p.m. comes around. Now you're supposed to be a kid and silly from, like, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So I think that, like, people ultimately need to just be themselves, you know? Like, you can't be all wound up and tight for eight hours a day and then just expect those eight hours to be, like, your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think even when I was, like, doing things in con, like, more, like, when I was doing TV and stuff, like... I had a day job because I just was like better with something to do during the day. I wasn't good at like, yeah, I'm just going to wake up today at noon and just maybe be creative. It's like, I'm better when it's like, I get up, I go somewhere. And then what would happen is at this job, I would just end up writing. You know what I mean? So it was like, I, I feel like you get a lot of people kind of like, there's a shame in like, doing something else. Like when I started doing, when I went to law school, I feel feel like a lot of people, a lot of people in comedy were like, Oh God, what is he doing? Like, he's just like giving up on comedy. It's like, 
well, no, I can still be like, you know, better than you at this, yeah. but also make money. You know, it's just kind of like, um, I think for a while I was like, well, I can't really be creative if I'm doing this other thing. But then I finally had a thing. I kept doing comedy and do and being creative. And I was like, fuck it, man. I'm just going to like, you know, I can still be good at comedy and do that. And like, but I mean, it's hard to balance. Don't you think? Wouldn't you say that maybe initially it was or no? I think it's hard to balance in any situ in any scenario. Even like I've had like a lot of times not working where I'm just was I you know, there are times where like I was just doing a lot of comedy and doing TV and like I probably could have lived on what I was making, but I wasn't productive. I you know, it's like the less productive you are, you know what I mean? Like the less you have to do, the less you're gonna get done. Ironic, you know, it's like a paradox. Like the busier you are, the more you get done because you're in the mode of doing like that, things. Bro. But you know I like what I mean? No, like, yeah, absolutely. I, because I like you that. think it's that thing of like, you go, you have like two weeks off or something. You're like, oh man, I'm going to get so much done. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to write two books. And then you end up just sleeping on your face the whole time. So like, I don't do well with idle time. Like I need a structure. I need someone to be like, that's why I kind of ex law school kind of was good for me because it was very like, you have to do this. You have to do this every day. I was so busy. So like it kind of like trained me again in like discipline and, you know, and then I kind of had the realization like, oh yeah, I can still be really creative still. It, it doesn't matter if I'm not getting certain things or doing, you know, doing certain things that maybe people think I should be. I just kind of relaxed more. And then like, you know, things kind of started happening a little bit. Like, you know what I mean? Like not huge, but I started, like I, I did an album and New York funny. Yeah. And then, um, Tom McCaffrey, New York funny, Apple mother effing music. Right. <laughs> Apple music. Yeah. Yeah. It's on, uh, Dude, it's funny. how it's like, I have no idea all these fucking streaming things now, like Limewire, Shazam all by the wayside. Napster. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> I know. Just, like, like Apple music, Apple podcast and Amazon music. I think are the big three and Spotify, of course. Pandora, Spotify. Oh yeah, Pandora. It's know. on like I don't know with the label that did it. They were just like, yeah, yeah it's mean, on this, and then I was totally. like, all right, I don't fucking know anything yeah. about anything. Yeah. And they were saying that like streaming is where it's all going because yeah, iTunes. Yeah, totally. They even said when I recorded, they were like, that's going to be done in like three years. iTunes, yeah. Well, I mean, Spotify is really shelling out the dough, like even for these exclusive podcast rights. You know, like I mean, yeah, whoever were to sign, you know, this podcast, we do five hundred million a year. We think about it. You know, we'll go over with our lawyers. But let us know. 500 million a year is the perfect number. It's funny. People are going to start getting paid for these podcasts, man. I know. It's fucking... I mean, I know Rogan was the big one, right? Yeah. He, I think, has a... It might be like 100 mil a year. Does that sound right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably. It was, it was, I mean, it was huge. But it also... It makes sense, man. Like people are start like creators, I think, are starting to get paid more money finally. Like back in the day, like when you were rapping, putting out your album, I bet there were probably people who wanted to sign you to a three sixty deal or something like that. Oh no, well, no. I mean that's in excuse <laughs> me, that's in like music, you know, like they'll front you five mil. So you sell your album, you gotta get yeah. it to five mil and then you have to pay back the interest and whatever. Yeah. That so that fucks people. But I think creators are slowly starting to figure it out. You know I mean? Yeah, and I think it's, uh, I mean, a lot, it, the good thing about it is that um, it's taken away a lot of the power of the, uh, the, the gatekeepers, thing, yes, the which, which when I was like, NFTs. <clears throat> when I was like really coming up in comedy, like the aughts and like the early 10s, whatever, what, what does that mean? the two, that early 2000s, the don't aughts. they call it the aughts? What, how do you spell that? A U G H T S. You've never heard of that? No. In I've heard it. I've seen it a lot. Is the yeah. Like 2000 to 2010. Is when I was like really doing, but that was my biggest era of comedy. Right, 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 um, right. But it was totally different. It was like you really were at the mercy of. It was like if three people didn't like you, that was it. it like, the, you know, late night yeah, spots yes. were like the main thing. That was a bit. Did you and, ever do any of those? No, it was like I, five minutes on whatever. No, in. I never did. I did TV things, but I never did. I did. Um, the sh the first TV thing I did was this thing on Comedy Central. It was like a showcase, you know, where I did like a six minute set, and then I did this show on Hulu that was like a stand up show. Um, oh, so that was probably more recent, no? That was like 2016. Okay. And then actually, the the company that distributed my movie produced it, Comedy Dynamics. Um, 
And then I did this show on Fox that was kind of like this shitty show, like that was stand up, like called Laughs. And it was like, I think it was like a four minute set. I think I've actually maybe seen that before, but like all the streaming services now are taking over. You well, know, that like- was the thing is like when I did the, the Hulu one, it was at a time still when it was like, oh, like I was like almost not embarrassed. I was like, what is this shit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But exactly. then like three years later, it was Everyone like, was that like, was the, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay. Netflix was like to get on a Netflix. Cause I think I did like a 10 minute set. So it was kind of like, Oh, I did like a a streaming thing and Hulu became almost as big as Netflix. So it was like later, like two years later, it became like a better thing. And so YouTube TV starting to fire out the true content. I mean, they are like a normal cable network. Now, if you have YouTube TV, you have all the right, right. Oh, yeah. NBC, uh, ESPN, ABC, whatever. I used to have Spectrum here. And I was paying like $110 a month for cable. So I just nixed yeah, that. Yeah, oh, I did that. And yeah. now I just use my whoever's Netflix. YouTube, Hulu, yeah, that's what Amazon, I do. Whatever. Yeah, it's a way to, But so, yeah, I never like, you know, the, I never, I never really even got a chance to do any of those late night spots. They just weren't late. I, I, I never really got asked to audition for them. And I was supposed to do a showcase for Conan once. And then the show, the showcase show got canceled like the day before. So it was like a weird it was one of those things I could never like get into. And it's a weird thing because like once you break into it, they just keep using the same people over and over. So I'm not sure if you've seen this. I mean, I'm sure you have, but they started like filming these sets at the comedy cellar, like mint TV or something. So I'd be interested to see if this will catch on, you know, where they just have like 30 minute blocks of just comedy and people can sign up via a, a channel or whatever yeah. it is. But I think like more people streaming more stand up comedy, I think, will will happen just because that's never really happened. You know that you've never been able to see 30 minutes of comedy, five different people. Right. On, like, right. One show. Like imagine how well that would do. Like if you had f- if you had um, five people doing six minutes each, if it's like Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Griffin, Tom. Right. Catherine, right. Or whoever it is. You know, I think they're like. That would do so well. Like everyone would want to tune into that one thirty-minute show, you know. Yeah, and what? Yeah, everything's changed, obviously, so much. But like, I think in the last like four years, that whole late night spot thing just kind of like went away. It How just do you mean? like, on like the they still had TV? them. I just feel like they just what? Like late night TV. Like late night, because yeah, like, because like those shows just weren't as watched yeah, as it's much. It's not like what you're watching Letterman or Leno like back right. in the day. Right. Like and it, it wasn't ago. like making anyone's career. So, and it, it felt very like, like I just said, they would, it was like everything in showbiz where like, they just kept giving it to the same people. Like they'd be like, this guy again. And then it gets to a point where it's like, you know, people be like, I did Conan four, like nine times. Dude. And it's like, all right, dude, but like what, it's kind of like that thing. I almost, it, it reminds me of the Facebook movie with the social network where they're like, do you ever see someone like in a picture holding up like 50 fish, 50 uh, little fish? And they just like, no, they usually see someone in a picture holding up like a huge Marlin. Like, I feel like all these, like I did nine Conans and I did five Valens. I did this. It's like kind of the, the, the equivalent of like holding up, 40 fish that you caught that are this big and it's like okay i'm trying to catch that i'm trying to catch what you mean there in literally catch. in this Shoo. in the social network i forget who says it i think it's justin timberlake's character Sean where he's Parker. like yeah and he's like you know you could kind of do this and facebook would be like kind of successful but you don't ever really see a fisherman holding up like 50 trout in a picture you want that one big they always now. have that one big fish sure, right so i think like i'm not saying like but i i just when i heard that recently i was like there's a lot of that in comedy what i was talking about before the, the competition of like i have nine tv credits i have that guy only has four tv like when i was caught up in it it was like well this guy's only done three tv things and it's been like a year and a half and it's like all right dude you did like like Killborn how, twice more. I, I don't or twice. About also, how many times you've seen credits when it's just like Fallon, Conan, stuff like that. I right. Mean, a lot of people have done it, and I'm not shitting on no, it. No, no, no. It's great. Obviously, I mean, obviously, I would do it, but yeah, it's yeah. just like I, I don't know it that. Seems as if a lot of people have done it. Yeah, and I don't. You know, just talking about it over and over. I, I guess that's the attitude I got later was like because I didn't do Fallon or Conan because I first of all I never even got to like. 
I think I submitted a, 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 a tape, whatever, a DVD or like a, a set to them once. And the guy was just like, yeah, I didn't like that. I liked that first two joke. I didn't like the other ones. And it's like, oh, cool. Thanks. Like, good critique. <laughs> um, but I think it was just kind of like, instead of me being like, oh, I suck. And they're so much better. I was like, you're just like wrong. Like, I don't, you're just... Like Michael Che in my movie actually makes a comment. And it's funny, ironically, it was I, I interviewed him and then he got Saturday Night Live like three months later. He said that he auditioned for like a club or a festival and the guy was like, ah, you're too green. You know, you weren't that good. And then like four months later, he auditioned for the same guy and did the exact same set. But he I had, he, got he had, no, but it was, it was, he had more heat from something, not SNL, but, and the guy was like, oh man, that was amazing. You're great. So it's like, he even said in that interview, it's like, they're not really looking for, you know what I mean? They're just kind of like looking at your heat. They're not really. And I could tell when I submitted that one time, I think it was to like maybe Fallon or Seth Meyers. I just had no heat on me. You mean momentum? Yeah. There was just no buzz. It was like, who are you? All right. Yeah. Like, no, we're not going to like, so I, I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, my set was so bad. It was just like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't really know who I am. So why would he, instead, they're just going to give this guy another late night spot. You know what I mean? Like, and that's when I said, I think I got that. I think I gave, I, I kind of gave up on the late night thing. Like, years ago i was like fuck that i don't even like want to do that shit so and i'm more like a longer set guy you know what i mean like oh yeah like i mean even at places like uh i mean free comedy show that i've seen tom at on friday nights uh black cat comedy i've seen you do like 15 20 there before yeah i love that show yeah Yeah. because he just lets me do like 20 yeah it's great when's the next time you're doing that show i don't know i think like i think in uh, not this weekend but uh the next one so is that the is that the next time we could see you Right I think I'm doing a Greenwich Comedy Club tomorrow night, Thursday. And then I think I'm doing uh, Greenwich on Sunday. Shout out your Instagram so we could uh, find you find your show, Sprout. Oh, I'm at, at Tom McCaffrey 722 and I'm on Twitter at Tom McCaffrey. And then I have a podcast that you Shout were on. Last Exit L- to Brooklyn. L- L-E-2-B, Last Exit to Brooklyn. Great podcast, man. You're getting a lot of love over there. You got some great guests. Yeah, we had and some really fun. good... Yeah, I, did, I put up the Janine Garofalo interview and uh, we just had Lisa Lampanelli. You were on it. And then yeah. we're, we're doing a new offshoot. You should do it. Do you smoke weed? What? <laughs> sorry. Yes, I smoke weed. <laughs> I feel like I it's weird. Like, I keep... Sorry. <laughs> It's so funny it's how like brand, it's so dude. funny I'm how like, like people weed smoker. It's funny how people like get mad at you if you like ask them if they smoke weed. Like, you what know do you what mean? mean? As like people obviously do smoke weed. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, they're like, like what? What? what do you mean? What do you think? You I don't, don't smoke weed. Cool? Like, it's kind of like the opposite of like accusing you of doing drugs. Yeah, like, literally. Yes, I smoke weed. What do you weed think? What do you, what do you think of me? So, what's the new angle of the podcast? It's called Plot Smokers, and um, it's basically I have a guest on, and they get really high before it, and uh, I ask them to kind of, like, uh, describe a movie plot to me, and then I ask them, like, trivia about the movie. Who decides the movie plot, though? Like, would, would I have to see a particular movie before uh, Well, I you know, you can... It, it can be a movie that someone likes. So I, I usually like, to them, like them to have seen it, like, recently. Yes. And then, um, oh, like, dude, I just saw Rookie of the Year. You remember that movie? When is the that the guy from American Pie? That's yes, nice. The guy who Thomas his Ian arm, Nicholas is he, his name. And yeah, Gary Busey. Oh uh, wow, movie. powerhouse cast. <laughs> yeah. So this movie, um, Rookie of the Year, rated PG, came out in like 1996, I believe. But like watching the movie the other week, I spoke to you guys about this on the last pod. Uh, so inappropriate. Should have easily been PG thirteen. Just like based on today's standards. Why? It was just a lot of the jokes fisting in there. scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not a fisting <laughs> scene, but that I would deem like yes, NC seventeen. But it just that's in the director's in cut. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be that's funny if uncut wouldn't that be funny cool. if some director just had like who did some just kind of like family movie <laughs> came out with the director's kind of just had like a 10 minute fisting scene <laughs> yeah they wouldn't the let, they wouldn't let me put this in um but wait what about rookie of the year like it was just it was, i forget why the fuck i brought it, it up. Oh, I mean, that was like the most that was like the most recent movie i've seen and i was high while i watched it so i don't know it could connect yeah do you yeah i mean i think the thing is they have to get they have to keep getting high now during it like we've we did Inception. That was a funny one because like I I had a guy who like is a real pothead, and that's kind of a hard movie to describe. Not high, sure. 
And he just could not do it. And he just couldn't stop laughing the entire time. So it kind of, it runs the gamut. Like sometimes it's funny because they don't know what they're talking about. But sometimes it's also good because you'll get really, you know, when you get high, you get really like focused, focused. And also you go really in depth of sure, like sure, dissecting sure. things. Yeah. So it, it becomes kind of, I did one Love recently that. with Alex Bashir about almost famous where he was really like dissecting like the things about the movie that were like interesting. Um, but I want to do it recently soon with someone with the movie Tenet. Have you seen that? No, but I've heard about this movie. Who's in that? Um, Denzel Washington's son. I forgot his name. The okay. guy who's in, um, he's in uh, Black Klansman. Uh, Kenneth Branagh's in it. It's the guy who did Inception, Christopher Nolan. But it's like, I don't know if you've heard, you, you haven't heard of, but um, it's like impossible to understand. Um, like I watched everyone's like, like I've talked to so many people when it came out and they were like, it, I have no idea what that movie's about. Right, right, right. And, um, I watched it like two nights ago and I was like, all right, well, let me just see if I, it was almost like, see, um, like a attempting, like, um, I don't know, like a card trick. I don't know. Like something I, I can't do in a Rubik's cube. Yeah. It was like, it was like, yeah. Attempting a Rubik's cube. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> we were like, let me see if I could do this. And, um, and meanwhile, you need a strategy to fully do the Rubik's cube. Cause I don't think you can do it. And you need a strategy cube. with this. Sure, sure, sure. So I went about an it's hour and a half in. Weed. I just was like, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And then I watched like two YouTube videos explaining it. Yeah. And I watched it again last night and I was like, oh, and it was almost like, it was interesting because it feels like figuring out how to do a Rubik's cube. Sure. So I thought it's funny because at first when I heard about that movie and everyone said it's impossible to understand, I was like, well, I'm not going to watch a shit movie like that. But now I like it because it's almost like, you know how movies are so dumb now? for the most part, yeah. like they're all just superhero movies where they're just punching everyone. Marvel like this Marvel, is yeah. a movie where it's like, it's like a, a math problem. And so it's kind of like, you feel kind of good about yourself when you start to understand it. Sure. Does that sure. make sense? No, I, I understand when other people don't understand something or like a movie in particular, and then you start to understand it and you can explain it to people while you're high, preferably. Right. Sure it's a great feeling. And it's not even like, cause some movies are like, you don't understand, you know, like David Lynch. It's a lot of like, you don't understand it. This is what this means. And this is what this risk represents. This is literally like, Oh, this, this is what they're doing. Right, right, right. And it's one of those movies, you know, where like there's hugely important plot information that they'll just have in one line. It's a movie where like, you if you attention. turn your head sure. and miss two lines, you, you don't know what's going Those on. Those are the hardest these days to pay attention to. Everybody, especially if they have their phone in their pocket, somebody texts you, somebody tags you in some post, like you're fucking done. You got to rewind like 20 minutes. Yeah, so it's almost like, I now I like it because it's almost it's like, so um, yeah, it's almost like a project that you have to like prepare <laughs> for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've never really had that with a movie where it's All right, like, there you go. hey, before you say, have you done your homework? You can't just show up to this so movie. So is, is this a movie you recommend then, Tenant? I'm always looking for like it's a like movie. you know yeah, really. if I, I would say before you watch it you have to like watch a video that explains it because really? it moves so fast okay. and it's I mean unless I might just be dumb okay. and like but like I, I don't think it's just that I'm dumb I think it's very like and I I would kind of recommend it but I think you have to do your homework you can't just go into it Tenant. you can't just be like oh I'm gonna try it's kind of like skiing you can't just be like oh, I'm gonna try it you gotta like Get some lessons. Sure, sure. And then go on like the Bunny Hills first. Right, then right. Watch the, some maybe videos. Hit the blues. Yeah, maybe exactly. the Black Diamond. Don't think about the double Black Diamonds until you fucking get those Black Diamonds. Like, Tenet is like if you've never skied going on a triple Black Diamond. <laughs> that's what it is. In the woods, in the freaking Swiss Alps. Yeah. All right, good. Well, I mean, that's one movie that we have here that you guys can, can check out. I always recommend movies, but this sounds, like a, this sounds like a good one. Where can we find it? I don't even know. Whatever, guys. To be. Tubi, Tom's favorite little app. <laughs> I actually uh, own stock in Tubi. That's why I keep right, talking right, about. Exactly. No, I don't. Know. It's on every. I think I saw it on HBO. Um, I, but it is. I mean, it's, it was a very maligned film when it came out. Okay. Because everyone's so you know everyone's just dumb now. So like no one wants to pay attention. People have shorter uh, attention spans. And if you notice, I mean, you came out with a rap album. No. I mean, the sh the songs these days are two minutes and thirty seconds. Songs did not used to be two minutes and thirty seconds. I know. Like within the last. Five years, every song that's been like hot and 
like boppy or whatever is under three minutes. Now in like t- 20 years, it's going to be like, yo. And it's like, oh, that was a good track. Yeah, that was hot. Yeah. That was fresh. Yeah, it's going to be like 20 second album, 20 we'll second see, long album. We'll see, we'll see how it breaks down. So Tom McCaffrey, thank you so much for coming to the couch today, thank man. You. Before we get out of here, is there anything else you want to tell the people? Shout out your Instagram name one more time. We're going to put it down here in the YouTube video. And um, hopefully, Tom, you'll send me these links. I'll put them in the description so we can watch you on the motherfucking TV. But you are always appreciated here, man. And I love having you on the shows. And until next time, right? Until next time. That was fun. All right. That was great. We ended it with a perfect handshake.